Okay, the next topic from the uh, section on subsets that I want to talk about is about counting subsets of a set. Um, and here I'm going to give a slightly different argument than the one that's in the book, and I would urge you or require you to read the discussion of this in the book and also um, hear what I have to say about it and see which one you like better. So here we go. So um, I'm calling this a, a theorem. A theorem is a fairly important statement which we are going to show to be true. So this is a theorem. And the theorem says that if you have a finite set and it has n elements, then it has 2 to the n subsets. So here's a very simple example. I have a set here with two elements, 1 and 2, and it has a total of four subsets. And what are they? Well, the empty set, because the empty set is a subset of every set, the sets 1 and 2, each of these are subsets of 1 and 2 because, in this case, for example, every element of this set is an element of that set. And similarly, every element of the set 2, containing only 2, is 1 and 2. And finally, you have the set itself, 1 and 2, which is, in fact, a subset of 1 and 2 because, as we said, it satisfies the condition that every element of this set is also an element of that one. And that's it. Um, if you want to see why, I mean, if you had a subset, either it doesn't have any elements, in which case it's the empty set, or it contains 1, and if it contains one, well, <clears throat> then it's either this or this, and that's distinguished by whether or not it contains two. So, um, and that's consistent with the formula because, of course, two squared is four. So, as I mentioned, the book gives an explanation for this on page 13, but we're going to look at it from a slightly different point of view from the book. Maybe we should look at one other example. Suppose we have the set A, B, C with three elements. So what are the subsets of the set A, B, C? Well, there's always the empty set. Then there are the one element subsets. Then there are the two element subsets. And then there's the three element subset of which there's only one. So we have one plus two plus, sorry, one plus three plus three plus one for a total of nine subsets. Ooh, that's not right, eight. Total of eight subsets. And of course, two cubed is eight. Okay, so what's a method for going about counting subsets? Let, let me indicate a, uh, a way that you can think about how to count subsets. So let's start with a finite set that has n elements. Um, so normally when you talk about a set, it doesn't matter what order you list the elements in, but let's pick any order and write them in that order. So what it, let's say my elements, I'm going to give them names, a1, a2, and up to a n. So if a were the set 1, 2, 3, for example, then I would have set a1 is 1, a2 is 2, a3 is 3. If a were the set hippo elephant giraffe rhino, then a1 might be hippo, A2 would be elephant, A3 would be giraffe, and A4 would be rhino. 
And as long as, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, but you, you order them somehow, you, some way you want. And it's a finite set, so you can do this. Now, how do we make a subset? Well, one way to do that is to go through our set and decide, our original set, and decide which elements we want to put in the subset and which elements we don't. So let me go back to my hippo, elephant, giraffe, rhino example. And the way I make, I'm going to make a subset, it, let's say I'm going to say, okay, I want to keep him hippo, so I'm going to write I under hippo, meaning in, and I'm going to keep elephant, but I don't want giraffe or rhino. So I, I, O, O corresponds to the set hippo, elephant. So by listing for each element of the big set, which elements I want to put in the small set and which elements I don't, I can describe a subset. So here's another couple of examples. A is the set minus 1, 4, 7, and 8, and I think of them in that order. So A1 is minus 1, A2 is 4, A3 is 7, A4 is 8. And suppose I want to describe the set minus 1, 7, which is a subset of A, because minus 1 and 7 are both elements of A. Well, Minus 1 is in, so I put an I. 4 is out. 7 is in. And 8 is out. So the ones that are in are minus 1 and 7, and the ones that are out are 4 and 8. And so uh, the sequence in, out, in, out corresponds to the subset minus 1, 7. On the other hand, if I go out, in, out, out, that corresponds to the subset, well, I don't want minus 1, but I do want 4, but I don't want 7, and I don't want 8. So out, in, out, out corresponds to the subset 4. So remember what it is we're trying to establish here. We're trying to establish that, the, well, oh, sorry, let me not get ahead of myself. So what I've shown here is that the number of subsets of a set with n elements is the same as the number of ways you can make a sequence of i's and o's of length n. And that length is 2 to the n. So the picture here is that a subset of the set A with n elements is the same as giving a list of I, O of length n. But that's the same thing. A sequence of length n of I, O, if we write parentheses around them, this is an element of the nth Cartesian product of the set S consisting of I and O, right? Because by definition, the nth Cartesian product are the ordered n-tuples of elements chosen from I or O. And we already know how to count the elements of this set, because we know that the number of elements in the nth Cartesian product of a set is the number of elements in that set raised to the nth power. So in this case, that number is 2 to the n. If you don't think that's too fancy, another way to say it is, in each position, you have two choices. So you have two choices here for I or O, two choices here for I or O, two choices here for I or O, two choices here for I or O all the way out to the end where you have two choices of I or O. And so the total number of choices is 2 to the n. And remember that each choice of I or O is a question of whether the corresponding element of the set is in the subset or not. So the number of subsets of a set
with n elements is 2 to the n. 